Hello and welcome everybody, King Demps here and today we are going to take a look at the last dance roster that is right as you can see only yesterday at the time of this video's release. The Brazilian project finally went official. Uh, it's obviously been rumbling behind the scenes for months now that this roster was going to be put together. There were rumours for a little bit that potentially Cold Zero would be a part of it but obviously that is not the case now, just to quickly summarize what I'm going to talk about in this video, we're obviously going to look at the kind of narrative and storyline aspect of this team coming together. We're going to look a little bit at potentially the skill ceiling we can expect to see from this roster and then look at potentially some of the role issues that might exist. Basically, I'm going to try and give you my opinion on how far I think this roster can actually go in tier one counter-strike because i can only assume that that is the intention of putting this roster together that they're going to be able to do some damage at tier one um the main reason i say that is because here fallen says he's tried to find the right people to do what they were able to do in the past that was win majors that was win tournaments that was be the number one team in the world so by their own standards we have to measure them up to that level obviously on one side of the coin this could just be pr talk and i suspect some of it is pr talk a little bit to kind of get people gassed up for the roster but those are the standards they've set so those are the standards by which we're going to judge them so i think the first thing to talk about with this last dance roster is the narrative and the storyline potential is obviously incredible the fact that we're getting a two-time major winning core reuniting is nostalgic as shit it is exciting just in a purely superficial sense getting to see fnx kind of come back from the dead getting to see fur back at tier one potentially alongside fnx alongside fallen getting to see bolts have a second kind of swing at being in the best brazilian lineup i feel like throughout history bolts has been done dirty a few times he was forced to kind of play the bitch roles on sk so it's cool to see him back with this historic core and get another shot at maybe doing something with them and then Vinny is Vinny it's great to see him land on a team obviously part of the furia lineup for a very long time now and seen quite a bit of success with that furia lineup i'm not sure if he was on the way out of furia and then this project came up or maybe he decided because of the opportunity to be part of this project he left furia i don't know the exact details on that but Either way, it's nice that Vinny isn't just left to kind of plunge through the depths of, of, of the Brazilian scene and try and work his way or go back up. It's nice to see him land on a project which these guys are probably going to get some invites. You know, we're probably going to see them at some decent sized events. So that's great for Vinny. Now, the first member of the team that we're going to look at is obviously going to be Fallen. Um, he is the kind of figurehead for this team. He's going to be the team captain. He is going to be the in-game leader. And we have to be honest with ourselves and say Fallen is not the same AWPA that he once was as part of SK slash Luminosity. Um, if we just scroll down here and look at his time in that SK Luminosity, a lot more events in the green. Uh, or not in the red i guess you could say a lot more events like here like going absolutely banger numbers that fallen just doesn't really exist anymore um he hasn't existed for a long time even towards the back end of his time in mibr he was becoming less consistent he was becoming just generally less of a fragger on the orb uh, and by the time he got into Liquid and during his time in Liquid, he basically never looked that great with the AWP. Um, obviously, we have an outlier tournament here at the Blast Premier Four groups where the team didn't even do particularly well. So, you know, his numbers don't look that great when they're associated with a poor finish for the team. Um, and just in general, Fallen ha has become not really as much of a star orper anymore he's not an orper that you want to put tons of resources into and you're not expecting him to take over the game with any regularity he still has his veteran now he still has the ability to clutch particularly he still has the ability to have maps where he is particularly strong and he goes off but those are kind of few and far between these days so i've got to be honest fallen i'm not expecting to get tons of fragging done on this team he's going to be there for the leadership Yes, he's going to have the AWP in his hands, and I hope that he can use it in a, a effective way. Because I think 
being a veteran, being somebody who has a lot of experience, you would hope that he's able to kind of utilize the AWP with efficiency if he's not going to be taking over games. The problem I do see with that is Fallen himself admitted that he doesn't understand the CSGO meta as well as he maybe once did in the past. So I am a little bit worried, if I'm honest, about what Fallen is going to bring to this team. So just looking at the first kind of player and what they're going to bring, I'm not filled with huge amounts of confidence looking at Fallen, but I'm going to give him more of the benefit of the doubt because he has been playing top tier Counter-Strike all the way through. It's not as if he's going to be as rusty as some of the other players on this roster. And he's not necessarily got to be the guy who's going to bring man frags. But we'll talk more about the fragging issue, I think, as we go through the video. So the next guy I actually want to talk about is Bolts. Um, he is obviously a guy who hasn't quite been playing top, top, top tier Counter-Strike recently. But he has been playing at a good level, obviously, with MIBR. And he's actually the guy on the team who's got the best stats. If you just kind of scroll through, like, you know, he's having some good events here. He's pretty consistently in the green, very rarely having red events, generally putting up solid kill differentials, solid ratings, solid kill per rounds. He's actually the guy statistically, uh, you know, you can go back pretty far and he, he's putting up actually pretty good numbers in general. Obviously, his time on SK wasn't the best. He wasn't given a lot of resources, but basically, Bolts is probably the guy on this team who you need to bank on being a fragger. He is actually the guy and... It kind of feels a little bit bizarre to say that because we haven't really seen him fragging in tier one. And if we have a look actually at his red events, it's the Cologne play-in where he's playing against better teams. It's the Spring Showdown where he's playing against better teams. It's the Blast Premier Groups where he's playing against better teams. The events he's actually struggled to frag in, again, EPL, like, look how low the kills per round are. These are kills per round. So it's a 0 0.63 and a 0 0.52 versus 0.7s at some of the lesser events. Again, another better event in his kills per round dropped dramatically. Obviously, that is also going to be representative of the fact that his team overall are not doing as well at these events. So as a byproduct, you're personally not going to be fragging so well. But I do think it suggests that maybe Bolts isn't quite a premier tier one fragger. I don't know. The problem is, is that you kind of see him as the safest bet to actually be a decent fragger on this team or at least by my reckoning he's the safest bet to be a decent fragger on this team um also will he be given the resources in a team that sports fallen that sports fur that sports fnx and he was historically he was the bitch player on sk like when they bought him in they bought him in to be a bitch player you know, there's actually an old uh, interview on HLTV where Cold Zero talks about how Bolts being in SK allows him to have more freedom, or allowed, I should say. So Bolts already has been the bitch player in the past, and I wonder if there is any chance that in this last dance roster, he actually would be given more resources and more rooms to shine. I'm really not sure, and even if he was... And I do see him as the safest bet to actually be able to output just raw numbers on this team. I'm still not filled with confidence. Now, next up, we have Vinny, who obviously alongside Fallen has been the guy who's been playing tier one Counter-Strike. Um, part of the Furia team ever since they've kind of risen up through the ranks and never really been one of Furia's star players. You've obviously got Serato is their obvious kind of out and out star. Yuri is probably like the secondary guy. And then you kind of have Art, who's like a super aggressive player. At different points, Furia had Henny, obviously. But never has Vinny been a focal point or had Vinny been a focal point of Furia. And his numbers kind of reflect that. Like in general, he is not one of the fraggers in general. His KPR is pretty low. Like, if we look here, it's dropping below 0.6 fairly regularly, even in not the best events. Even in events where they're doing well, his KPR isn't crazy. He's not hitting 0.7 that often, and kind of 0.7 is like a solid KPR. That's kind of what you want to be aiming for if you're going to be a decent fragger. It just doesn't really happen for Vinny. Yes, you do have some outlier events. Obviously, he was very good in IEM4, but Furia kind of rolled that whole event, so... 
not too surprising that he's got good statistics there. Again, better statistics here at this Eliza Invitational, which they won, but that's like a tier two event. Not really anything to write home about. Like, there are some examples, again, here, this third to fourth at EPL Season 13, he's done pretty well, putting up pretty solid numbers. But, like, Fury, Furia, Vinny is not a mad fragger. Like, that's not what Vinny does. Vinny isn't somebody who goes out there and drops 30 with regularity. So, again, it's another player where you're like, I don't really see the frags coming from this guy. Mm, not too sure. Obviously, the last two that we're going to talk about is we're going to talk about Fur and FNX. These are the two guys who um, have been playing kind of the least Counter-Strike in recent years compared to the other three. They've had periods in and out of teams, and they haven't really been playing to a good level for like a decent while now. Um, I mean, these are just Fur stats. Yeah, there's like a lot of really poor events here. There's a few good ones, but they're in, you know, that's kind of a dog tier event. That's a you know not a great event either yeah and then we'll just go and have a look obviously at uh fnx's event history as well again you know whatever not playing awful lot and not playing uh, in high tier events he's putting up some okay numbers in some of these events like you know he's, he's looking decent in a couple of these but he hasn't paid a huge amount of counter-strike in general recently um, obviously he did have a little, uh, period playing for Paqueta. I hope that's pronounced right. But even then, it, you know, that was like half a year ago now that he played his last event with Paqueta. So I don't think you can expect anything out of FNX or Burr. Like it's just not reasonable to expect them to do any fragging whatsoever. I'm not saying they a hundred percent definitely won't be able to do something in tier one now, but there's just no evidence there to suggest that they could. They haven't played at a decent level in a long time. They haven't even played huge amounts of Counter-Strike between them in the last like year or two. So yeah, FNX and Fur have to be people you just set no expectations for. And if you are setting zero expectations on them to frag, then you need to look to Bolt, to Vinny, to Fallen. Like, where, where are the kills going to come from? I just don't see how this team are just going to get enough kills to win games. Like, I... I where, where, where the frags be at? Where, the, where they be? Obviously, the final person to talk about in this lineup is to talk about Peacemaker. Now, I think Peacemaker is such a hard person to kind of gauge. Whenever he joins a team, I always kind of shrug my shoulders because he's got such a patchy and mixed track record. Obviously, for example, like his time in Mad Lions, they were pretty successful, and he was a coach of them for about 14 months. Um... But he has also been the coach of some very short-lived and very disastrous projects. Um, you know, obviously, most recently in time, his time in Complexity. And he is generally associated with joining teams and then them immediately falling apart. However, again, on the other flip side of all of this, you get a lot of positive feedback about him and his coaching. There's a lot of people who talk pretty highly about him in the scene. So it's very, very difficult to kind of gauge where Peacemaker is as a coach. So I tend not to even bother whenever Peacemaker is announced. I, like, I just got to shrug my shoulders and say it's so hard to know exactly how good, how much of a positive contribution Peacemaker has. Um, on the plus side, for sure, it's definitely that they're all Brazilian. They're obviously going to be able to talk in their native language. That is very important and definitely a massive boon. Um, and I I've got to at least hope that Peacemaker... I think the biggest criticism I've seen of Peacemaker in the past is that he has a little bit of a, let's say, authoritarian approach. Um, and maybe this is more so in the past than more recently. Um, and I think that potentially Fallen Fur FNX, like, they're not going to let themselves get pushed around by a coach. Like, they could be a good thing. You know, maybe they can work together a little bit better with Peacemaker. Maybe it's going to be a bad thing because potentially I can see this causing friction. But who knows peacemaker i'm just going to give a massive shrug of the shoulders to i have no idea whether it's a good or bad thing getting peacemaker as a coach at this point it's so hard to tell now the other thing that i want to talk about with these five players is i want to ask you about the roles like what do people think the roles are going to be on this team obviously fallen's going to warp and fallen it seems like it's going to igl as well Outside of that, I don't know. Like, who is the entry 
here. Is Fur going to take up entry duties? Who's going to be part of the entry duo with Fur? Are you sending Bolts in with Fur? Are you sending Vinny in with Fur? I mean, I would suggest probably it's Fur and Bolts of the entry duo. You send out Fur, Bolts tries to clean up frags. Who's going to be the more supportive element on this team? Is it going to be Fallen and Vinny? But then the problem is, is you're putting a lot of emphasis on Fur and FNX to frag. But are Fur and FNX going to be supportive players on this team? I kind of don't see that happening. I just can't, for the life of me, figure out what natural roles this team kind of fits into. It's difficult to put Fur and FNX anywhere because they haven't played a huge amount recently and you just don't know what to expect for them. But you don't want to put them in roles where you're expecting them to frag, but then you're probably having to put more emphasis on Vinny and put him in positions and roles where he's going to frag. I just, I, I don't know. I don't see any way on paper of putting these five players in a good set of roles for them. Like, I just, I just don't see any way on the surface of doing it. And then the final point I want to make is I want to ask the question about mentality. Are particularly Fur and FNX going to be interested? Like, are they going to give a shit? Are they going to actually put any effort in? Are they going to take practice seriously? FNX obviously had motivation issues in the past, and that's why he hasn't played the game a lot recently. Fur has apparently also had motivation issues in the past. On the surface, you have to ask some questions like, is this just an attempt to grab a paycheck? I don't know, maybe. Obviously, the excitement and the content potential and the narrative potential behind the teams is huge. So in summary, I don't really know what to expect from this team. And I'll be honest, even my peak expectations are not very high. I just don't see how the roles in this team are going to make a huge amount of sense. I don't see where the fragging is going to come from. I just don't think this team are going to get enough kills, quite frankly. The fact that they've set their expectations at doing what they did before, there's no way they're going to get anywhere near that. And at best, I see this team maybe hanging in Tier 2. Like, maybe they can do some stuff in Tier 2. Maybe they can domestically in North America, like, kind of potter around and win cash cups and stuff like that. But, like, the, the, let's put it this way. This team's never going to win a major. Never in a thousand years is this five going to get anywhere near winning a major. Absolutely not. Outside of that, what do I actually expect? I think the realistic expectations have to be like tier two. Like maybe they can squeak into the top 20. But even then, I'm not I'm not certain about that. You know the drill, guys. If you liked it, comment, favorite, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And if you didn't, pew, I don't know what that was. But get out of here.